What are you all doing? Sharing information. Yeah, it's my it's my business card. Yes, all right. So uh, my name is April Wolf. I'm the therapeutic recreation specialist for City of Reno. Um, so I just want to thank you for joining this hybrid. I was hoping to have more people in person. Um, spinal cord injury lunch and learn, but thank you for joining us online. Um, this is offered monthly, um, the third Wednesday of the month with topic based um, speakers. Um, so I hope you can join us next month. Uh, this is brought to you by the city of Reno, BAC or Nevada healthcare system, renowned health and the high fives foundation. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you are on uh, zoom, you can enable closed captioning if you need it. Um, you're welcome to type any questions in the chat, or you can take yourself off mute at the end of each speaker. Um, and then if you have any suggestions for future topics, please feel free to type them in the chat. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy, who is our speaker this month. All right. Hello. All right. Thanks, April. I will go ahead and share your screen. One second. All right, you should be all set. Okay, um, just to introduce myself a little bit, um, my name is Nancy Estacado, and um, I am, I've been at Sunrise Hospital Medical Center for over 27 years, and I am um, a physical therapist um, who was, I've always had a deep passion for wounds, and um, I have developed um, a pretty cool program at Sunrise Hospital. It's kind of the first woundology type department like radiology. We actually have woundology where we are certified and do wound photographs um, and are read by experts so that there's not conflicting of documentation and it's based on evidence. And so I invented the Anyone tool, which is an evidence-based tool that helps um, get people on the same page based on tissue types on how to classify wounds correctly. And um, we have also then brought into Sunrise Hospital a group, um, the Burns Reconstructions of America, and they will be speaking later. And they do more surgical, more advanced services for very difficult wounds to heal. And so our um, approach is pretty um, patient-centered and um, we really try to find what the enemy is and then we try to correct it and get you healed and on your way of life. <laughs> so um, that's a little bit about me. Okay, next slide. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just talk about pressure injuries, prevention and treatment options. And I, I think this is a real big question because you have to kind of know the basics before you can um, uh, really know what to go from there. And pressure injuries aren't always classified correctly. And they're not even some things that you thought might be a pressure injury isn't even a pressure injury, unless you do that deep dive in a good history. So learning the basics about pressure injuries is where we're gonna start. And then we'll go into things that are more advanced. Okay, next slide. Okay, starting off with just the definition of a pressure injury. So um, a lot of my slide is what I want to be geared is to a more simpler language, but I think a lot of us know what a, a pressure injury is more referred to in the layman's term as a bed sore. Um, in the past, you've heard pressure ulcer, you've heard bed sore, decubitus ulcer. Um, the 2022, the correct name is called pressure injury. I won't go into the details why, but just so you know, it's all the same thing. And it's due to lack of movement and, and loss of blood due to pressure or pre pressure with shear. And that's when you slide down. I'll talk about that. Okay, next slide. Oh, so how did you get the pressure? Is a, is a pressure injury is, is a question you're gonna ask yourself. And it usually occurs over the tailbone or, or your hip bones, but most common is the sacral, your tailbone or the heels are the most common areas. But anywhere that you have a bony prominence, it's gonna be at risk to break down with pressure injury if you're not able to move well. And we know that is very high risk with spinal cord injuries and anything really neurological like strokes. Um, so whenever you complicate not moving and, and a bony prominence and an and ischemic event, it's complicated if you have issues with moisture and bacteria. So those areas around the perineum 
around your buttocks area are just going to be even more at risk to break down due to hygiene issues. So we got to keep it clean and dry. Okay, next slide. Okay, what does it mean to you? Um, when you have an open wound on your body, you really need to take it seriously. Um, I mean, more important is the prevention aspect is don't put it off as something is red and it doesn't go away. But if you end up having a wound, you really need to stay close with your doctor and your nurse and, and follow the treatments that they're gonna tell you to do. Um, anytime you have a wound, it's called moist wound healing. Your, any wound that's too dry is bad and any wound that's too wet is bad. So you're trying to figure out what is the best treatment in order to keep it right in the middle so you have moist wound healing. That's how you choose your bandages um, in order to perform that moist wound healing environment. And that it's also in an anti, you know, lack of, uh, you don't want to have bacteria growing in there as well. So you have to really address the wound and follow whatever your doctor or nurse is saying. So I have to be really careful in this PowerPoint that I am really not telling you um, advice with because I don't I have to be able to see a wound and you have to be under the doctor's care. So stay close to your doctor and nurses and do what they tell you to do. Um, just a couple little nuggets is just know that we don't leave wounds open to the air anymore. Just let you know that we still get people who think it's good to let it breathe and open to the air. And that only invites bacteria that floats in the air to land in the wound and have a party. And so we don't want bacteria to grow in the wound. So we want it to be clean and we want to keep it covered, clear until it's closed. But we wanna choose the right products that allow it to be that perfect environment for moist wound healing. Okay, next slide. Okay, what should you do about it? Okay, um, again, following the directions of your doctor, but pressure injuries, you have to get rid of the enemy. And so whenever you do a, a good history to find out what is the cause of the wound, and if it's due to poor mobility, the lack of being able to turn, the lack of ability to um, lift your heels off the bed. Um, if, you're, if it points to a pressure event, that's what's gonna pull it toward that being a, a pressure ulcer type wound. And then you want to do things that eliminate that problem. So if you're not able to offload in sitting every 15, 20 minutes, you really need to completely offload for a tissue to get its blood supply back is like two minute time period. So you have to have those techniques of leaning way forward, shifting off to each hip, whatever it takes to offload. And then if you're laying in bed, you have to know that you can't be raising your bed halfway, you know, that, that halfway between sitting up and laying down. If you lay in that position, then your muscles slide one way and your bones slide the other. They call that shear. And then you get that deep tissue injury that surfaces two or three days later. That's called a deep tissue injury. Those are the ones that die from the bottom up. And then you end up with that horrible pressure injury. So you're never going to heal with any of the great advice that we give you or treatments if you don't get rid of the pressure problem. So that's why you really wanna look at your support surfaces. Um, sometimes I can walk into a facility or a home and they'll be like on a waffle mattress. Well, if the waffle mattress isn't inflated correctly, meaning you have to do a hand check and make sure they're not bottoming out or that it's not filled correctly, then you're back to having a bad pressure injury problem. So you have to get rid, you have to know your products, you have to know how to use them, and you have to eliminate that pressure, whether it's in sitting in your car seat, you know, if it's taking your bath, it's in your toilet seat, but you have to look at pressure and you have to get that out of the equation to your problem or you're never gonna heal. The other thing that support is, of course, is eating healthy and you need to stay well hydrated, but you know, protein and all your vegetables and your vitamins, you have to have um, healthy skin. So um, yeah, good, good diet. Next, helpful hands. Um, obviously, you know, if you can walk and exercise, we know that's good, but a lot of you are chair bound or bed bound and don't have the ability to offload. So just make sure again, that you're not using the head of the bed halfway. You're making sure that you get the right care to support you with an offloading program. And boy, one thing I'll sit and tell you is that when you go into a facility for care, 
they don't understand the spinal cord injury. And so you have to know you better, you take better care of you yourself better than anybody does. So you have to have a loud voice and you have to say, get my heels off the bed. You have to say, turn me. And when they say you're on a bed that you don't need to be turned, you go up to administration or find somebody and say, you never have a situation where turning is not in the equation. And some people think when they're on a clinitron bed, like you don't have to turn anymore. That is not true. You still even have to turn even on a clinitron bed. You may not have to turn as often. And a clinitron bed is where the beads and the air fly up through the bed that you'll get in hospitals whenever you have um, a surgery that's more involved. And that's the highest in bed that you can get um, for pressure relief, but you still need to turn. So really be that advocate for um, uh, get, getting offloaded, getting off, because they just don't understand the spinal cord needs um, to be met in the hospitals. Just have that mentality. And some will be better than others, but just be ready to have, you have let your horns come out and, and demand to be offloaded and turned and get the right equipment and the right beds and the right equipment. Blink, I'm always going to tell you to drink plenty of water. We really got to keep you hydrated and prevent uh, the skin from breaking down. Okay, next slide. Uh, one of the things, uh, just a helpful hint on how to change your bandages, you know, when you're at home, a lot of you, um, and you're having your um, caretakers, um, your significant others change your wounds, or maybe you're changing it yourself, depending on where it's at. Just make sure you really wash your hands with soap and water before you start. Um, that's a no brainer, but we really need to say that because that bacteria lands on your fingernails and your hands and will get in the wound and cause you a problem. Uh, get all your supplies that you're ready, um, you know, get into a really good comfortable position and, and placing a bag so that you don't get your bed sheets and things dirty. Um, just, so just be really prepared before you start um, to change that bandage. Okay, next slide. And then place your, so just think about getting a plastic bag that you have at home. Some of you may have gloves and all and a nice bag, but, but get a plastic bag and then you can grasp the, the bandages with your hand and your hands outside of the bag and then fold it on over so that your hands never touch the bandage. And then you can close that tightly because those bandages are contaminated and you really don't want to mix it with other stuff at home. So then put it in your bag and tie a knot and throw it in the trash can. And next slide. Okay, how to examine your pressure injury. Okay. Um, look at your injury, you know, and as the wound heals, this is something I really want to talk about is, is you, your wound should look pink and red. Um, colors that are bad are going to be your black. And, and a lot of people may not understand a black dead tissue versus a brown scab. They're two complete different things, but black tissue that they call eschar is dead tissue and that is not good. And then whenever that black tissue starts to liquefy, it turns into yellow and it's called yellow sloth. That is dead tissue. So black colors are bad, yellow colors are bad, and purples are also a sign of a wound evolving. So if it's related to pressure, those deep tissue injuries are usually a, a damage that's going to be down below at the muscle bone interface. But these can be reversed if they're approached in an early stage. But if they evolve too far, they will turn into the black color over time. So um, know your colors. Know that red and pink is what you want. And if you don't have, if you're looking at a wound that smells or is angry looking, the red edges and um, any signs of a spiking a low grade temperature um, isn't moving, th that means that you need to contact your doctor or your clinic that you go to. Um, if the wound's getting bigger or smaller, you know, what you need to really know is that it, it doesn't make sense if you have a wound for months and months or years. I mean, I know people who will say, yeah, I've had it for four years, or I've had this wound on my sacrum for the past eight months. There's something in the equation that isn't letting the wound, what they call proliferation, it's not letting the wound do the little buds of red granular tissue and contraction. 
something has stalled your wound. And that is the, the detective game that you need to seek out with your professional doctors and your clinics. And a lot of time, what's really good is a punch biopsy. It's, it's actually, they take a piece of the tissue to really figure out if there's something histology going wrong that you're not proliferating or closing or budding and getting smaller. Sometimes it can be simple as a biofilm build up, meaning that um, same thing biofilm exists on your teeth when you brush your teeth, you have to really clean it in order to get the plaque off your teeth. So sometimes in a deep tunnel or an area, you'll get a big uh, buildup of biofilm, which then can turn into an infection. And that's what's stalling it is because you're not cleaning it or don't have the right products to kill the bug or the, 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 the growth of a bacteria that's in your wound. Um, sometimes it can be a simple pH problem. Um, wounds that are in there too long and not healing tend to go up the chart in the pH. And in order to heal and proliferate, you need to, to come back down. So you might be choosing products that help you with a pH issue. So you have biofilm problems, you can have pH issues, you can have that chronic, sometimes you get this buildup of what they call proteases, which is just a, a you get stuck in a wound and in a uh, phase of wound healing that doesn't let you jump to the next phase and you have to correct that and sometimes I do that with collagens um, so wounds will really heal if you do the ABCs and that is you're really paying attention to getting rid of the pressure problem you're eating well you're cleaning your wound correctly and then you're covering it with correct dressings that prevent bacteria from growing. So if you don't clean it well, then your silver dressings and your honey dressings, they can't penetrate a biofilm. So if it's not cleaned well, those expensive dressings don't work. And so if you do do those things correctly, usually your ABCs of wound healing will occur. But if they're not, then you can advance into what we call advanced options to wound healing. And that's where um, I wanted to bring you to um, the Burn uh, Reconstruction Centers of America is what we have at Sunrise Hospital. They're going to talk more about those um, options that we have at Sunrise to share for you to look around where you live or parts of the country to look for true advanced healing centers that really know what they're doing with um, your graphs, you can have, you can go in for what they, what they call, um, graphs, um, and they'll take you to surgery and they'll do flaps sometimes. Uh, sometimes they just use advanced collagens. Um, then of course, a lot of wound backs are out there and they do a great job too, but sometimes wound backs combined with these advanced products or surgeries, they really get the job done quickly. And then you're not saying it's, you know, you get healed quickly and closed and get on with your life. But this right here is a handout that I put on here. And it's, it's just what I went over. So you can all have it and take it with you. It's, very, it's meant to just be for the basics of wound care. And then it, it allows you then to keep that communication with your doctor. And so if you can write things down in case you forget them. And um, the... Uh, uh, it's available for you to print out and take with you. So do we have um, the advanced group on the line yet with the PowerPoint? By the way, that's Shelby, my daughter. She is a spinal cord and part of the hi fis Foundation. And she um, has been trained well to check her skin. Uh, you can use things like your cell phones on a stick to check your bottom and look at your heels. Um, there are um, apps that are coming out that you can uh, take your pictures and from home and send them into your doctors and clinics to um, use your picture for communication and then more education on skin health and these apps that help you. Um, so there's lots of great stuff that's coming that you can do right from your phone so you don't have to remember all these things. So this is BC, uh, the Sunrise Hospital where I'm at and the Burn Reconstruction Centers of America. So we do everything from burn cases from all over the state to pressure injuries um, that need advanced surgeries and care to circulation problems 
to things that come in like necrotizing fasciitis that needs surgery. Um, there pretty much isn't diabetic. There isn't anything that they really don't touch or do, but they do a great job at a very advanced level. So Heather, did they show up? Are they on the phone? Um, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. I'm going to mute myself. I was going to see. All right. Um, so I just, I'm just going to stop sharing that way. I can see, I don't see anybody on here um, from that admitted during the meeting. So I don't know if you want to add to the advanced care or we can open it up to questions as well. So um, I know I covered a little, th a few things, but I, I think the folks that are on the line is just know that um, there are advanced services that go past um, a, a debridement and a wound back. Um, if things aren't proliferating and healing, there are advanced options and more detective work that needs to be done. Uh, I think if you think of a broken bone, we think, okay, a broken bone heals in six weeks. Um, whenever we think of wounds, and, and, it, and remember these are guidelines, is you want to think of a wound closing in 12 weeks. So if things aren't cascading and moving along that timeline, you need to sit back and do something different and not keep doing the same thing. And, and mind you is if you got rid of your pressure problem, so they can do all this great care, but if you don't get rid of the, the main enemy, meaning the cause of the pressure, nothing's gonna work. So if you've eliminated that and you're still not healing, um, think about surgical approaches to flaps if they're appropriate, or do I need to have, there's all different kinds of graft products to use. There's um, uh, stem cell that you can use. Um, there are uh, advanced collagens that you can use. Um, there's just an array of products and things, but don't keep doing the same thing if you're not getting the outcomes that you want and it's going to be months and even years and you still have that wound and, and ask the, your questions why on that aspect. I do have a question. If I'm yep, on. go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just in reference to the advanced collagens, um, are those specifically designed with the patient's tissue? Or are these generic collagens that are applied? Well, there's both. Okay. I mean, it, I mean it, literally the kind that you can spin out from your own self. I mean, they're, we, they, the, the burn centers, I wish they were on and they could speak to it more specifically, but um, they, uh, I don't want to get into product names and stuff here but they definitely uh, resort. I mean, they'll, they'll, they even do from the collagens, but they'll, they'll even do the grafts that they spray on. They'll even take a person's skin and have it sent off to be grown in another, uh, those are with the burns, more with the burns, um, but it's pretty advanced. It's pretty amazing what they, they're able to do. The, the, the reason I was asking, I didn't know if there was any, any way for individuals to apply collagen to their self or is that something that needs to be done well no, when you get in most of your um your companies out there will have your your uh they have that type one type three collagens that they'll have them your medline has them your smith and nephew have them they're, there's pretty they're pretty well known to be out there now um it's just i think uh um even the quality of the collagen, I think you have to do your research and what you buy because they're not all the same. And um, I think the thickness of it and, um, but for the most part, if you're stuck and the collagen becomes that sacrificial lamb that kind of goes after those proteases and then tries to shift that wound into the proliferation phase. That's if you're, it's a cr chronic wound. So sometimes when you use a collagen and it's early and it's an acute wound, it's not going to really do anything because that's not your problem right. um, to need the well, collagen. Thinking, so. you know, some of these people do have long-standing problems that they're just trying to mm -hmm. self-manage. Um, right. Whether that might be an option for them as an addition to, you know, some of the dressings. 
Oh, because I use them all the time. I'm just letting you know. I if I go and I see a wound, and the first thing in the ABCs of your wound care is to make sure. I mean, we, we talked about pressure. Okay, we got rid of that. But it's the problem that you have when people have a wound greater than 30 days. You know that they're going to be growing biofilms. You got a biofilm. It may not be infected, but you got a colonization of biofilm going on because. Some people are afraid. So we, we take our curettes and our blades and we scrape the wounds because we're licensed to do that. Right. But a nurse, we try to teach them is, is it, you can take a gauze and lightly debride the wound. They call it soft debridement in order to get biofilms. Because if you don't, your collagens, your silver dressings and your honey dressings can't penetrate a biofilm. So um, learn how to clean a wound correctly. And sometimes you have to use lidocaine or use medications and some people don't fill the wounds and so you can really shine them up i always say put a wound through the car wash you're not running out in the in the rain and coming back into the house and call it clean you got to really put it through the car wash and then i always sit and say make sure that you know what you're cleaning it with because normal saline is great but if i go into a shower and wash my hair with water my hair still feels dirty and that's because you don't have a surfactant in there and so we know that your shampoos and your soaps at home are too strong of a surfactant. Surfactants is what let, that doesn't let dirt hang onto your hair. It slides off. It's a slippery slope that it causes. So if I had to tell you to do a home remedy that's better than water, I would tell you to take Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo and dilute it into, it's a very gentle soap, but dilute it in a pan of water and gives you a little bit better than just water or normal saline to get bacteria off. And then I will tell you to, um, if I don't use a toothbrush to brush my teeth, the biofilms stick and they protect the bacteria. It's called a, a free platonic bacteria gets into a cluster under a biofilm and they stick and they, their buddies get protected. And so how do we get rid of it? We use a little friction and that gets rid of the biofilm. Then once it breaks it up, the free platonic bacteria get killed by what? Silver, honey, they all work. So if you clean it well and use then those products that are intended to, to help keep the bacteria down, then you can leave your wounds alone and then only change it whenever they, um, because you want to keep that moist wound healing environment and then they'll, they'll proliferate. You leave them alone. The body will, will uh, proliferate faster if you don't disrupt it, but it has to be clean. You have to use the right products to do that. Is sugaring a wound still a thing? No. I mean, when I say that, do you, if you, my mother was a nurse way, way back when she was born in 1920 and they poured sugar in the wounds at nursing homes and all. So the high content of the, the sugar, it, bacteria hates it. And that's where you see under a Petri dish that they, that you'll have a, where it kills bacteria, but you, what the, what they have is the thera honey or a manuka honey. But anyway, it's a manuka bee. That's a special bee that they really find has that right pH change. That's what you look for in honey. And then it is also needs to be sterilized and done properly. So don't use any teddy bears or don't use any table sugars. You need to use the medical grade honey. And then you one thing that's great about honey is that it will, if you feel a burn, it's because it's a change of a pH. It will pull it down that chronic wound pH. It will pull it down because you want it to be like 4.5 or so, not hang out at eight. So if you get a burn, that's a good thing because your pH was probably too high in a chronic wound. And then you also get um, bacteria to be reduced because bacteria hates that high sugar uh, content as well. Um, just want to open it up if there is anybody on Zoom that has questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat, or you can take yourself off mute if you would like to ask Nancy a question before we wrap up. All right, so not seeing anyone jump off mute. I want to thank you, Nancy, for taking the time to uh, share all your knowledge. I'm sure you could talk for hours on wound care mm -hmm. and we would love to hear all the things that you could tell us. Um, so thank you so much um, for your presentation and your materials that you shared. And uh, we hope to uh, work with you in the future. Okay, great. And thank you for inviting me. All right, thank all right. you. All right, all right, bye-bye.